Here I'm going to show you how to calculate the compound interest of an investment or an amount of money in a bank using Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to show you the way that you can do it by hand right here and then how you can use a formula right over here. The last um, tutorial talked about simple interest and with that we did not account for the interest payments or we didn't calculate interest based on the total amount let's say in a bank account. But here for compound interest you can see we're going to account for every year the increase in the total amount. So let me actually go ahead and set this up. Um, we're going to say we have basic simple $100 as a principal amount. So let's say you put $100 into a bank. Keep it simple. The interest rate is 5%. I wish, but it'll simplify things. So now after year one, let's say you put $100 in at the beginning of year one, right? You get 5% interest. Well, 5% of 100 is $5. So 5 plus 100 is going to give you the $105 total for year one. But with compound interest, this $105 total is going to is the beginning amount for year two and we're going to multiply that by the five percent interest rate in order to get the interest payment so for year two instead of where it would be for simple interest five percent times the principal amount it is now five percent times the beginning amount or the total amount you currently have in the bank account so five percent times one hundred and five plus this amount equals 110.25. Again, the, the ending amount for year two would be the beginning amount for year three. And this amount times 5% would be the amount that you would be paid in interest. And here's the total that you would have after year three. Now to properly do these calculations in Excel, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you set this up as I have this interest rate right here, 5%, but if I multiply 5% by 105, I'm going to get the interest payment, not the total amount. So in order to get the total amount, instead of just the interest payment, it's 1 plus the interest rate times the beginning amount at the year, at the beginning of the year. So it's 1 plus 5% times 105 equals 110.25. Anyway, that's how you do it by hand. If you have to write this out on paper, you may be forced to use this method. However, there is a formula, and um, it's right here. So let's take a look at that. Now we're going to keep all the same stuff, $100 principal, 5% interest. We're going to do it for three years, but now we've got this formula right here. And I've got exactly what each thing means. So essentially, we're going to get the value of uh, a certain amount after so many years with so much interest, compounded, right? So we have PN, so P for the number of periods equals present value times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the number of periods. If you need to memorize this formula, you might as well just pause on this screen and you can see an explanation of each element of the formula right here. So let's go ahead and work out the formula. I've got the completed one right here. And let's go ahead and do it. So actually I'll do it by hand. I'm not going to reference any cells here. So equals, now the first thing that we need is the present value. What is the current amount that we're going to put into the bank account? $100. Multiply that, open parentheses. Now remember, $100 plus the interest rate. The interest rate here is 0.05. Close parentheses. Raise it. So the little caret right there on your keyboard, shift 6, will give you the caret. Now the number of periods that we'd like to account for. We want to account for three periods. Each period, in this case, being a year. Now when we hit enter, we get 115.763. Format it as a dollar real quick. And there we go. So you can see it's exactly the same as this, this method, but with only one formula. Now when you're doing compounding interest, um, especially on paper, you're really going to need to simply memorize this formula right here. It's very important. And even when working in Excel, you need to know it because Excel does not provide you with a function to calculate compounding interest for the future. 
So here's the formula. And um, actually, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom function in Excel. It's called a UDF, User Defined Function. Sounds kind of complicated, but I'll show you all the code. And then we're going to create a function that will actually calculate the uh, future value for compounded interest for us. So that way, once you do that, you don't have to remember this formula right here. But I'm going to say from experience, you really need to remember this formula, especially because in the later tutorials, you'll be working um, not just with future values, but present values. And you need to be able to do all of this um, on a financial calculator as well as Excel. So that's it for this tutorial.